My name is Marcus Blood. I'm uh, the director for supply chain in the West. I've been with 4840 uh, for almost 14 years. I think it'll be 14 years in March. Um, I have managed one of our facilities as well as worked within the supply chain or brokerage group. We had talked in August and September that we thought maybe there was going to be some stabilization in the fall and that maybe we would kind of see the new normal. I think what we're finding is we haven't reached that yet. We What we thought we would see in the industry in November and December just simply hasn't hasn't happened yet. There's still more demand for pallets than there are pallets available. Um, it's softened a little bit, but you know, we just finished Black Friday, which is typically a big flush out of pallets from retailers. We didn't see what we would normally see in a normal year. That's the second year in a row that the flush of pallets in the recycled market just ha hasn't happened. We see every day on the news uh, some sort of a story about supply chain. And as I mentioned, there's still a lot of manufacturers that are still trying to catch up from the downtime a year and a half ago when everybody was shut down. They, they've never been able to get caught up and their feet back under them. Labor is a big issue. As, as people are trying to catch up, um, we hear all over, everywhere we go, we, we see signs uh, now hiring. We, we're talking to everybody that we talk to, whether it's a customer, whether it's a vendor, whether it's a partner, whether it's a competitor, is struggling to find labor. So as everybody's trying to catch up from the downtimes at the beginning of the pandemic, but fighting to get labor um, with the labor shortages, that's creating another challenge that is simply one that the only real solution is automation and that doesn't happen overnight. The biggest components of what's gonna happen over the coming six to 12 months, um, as I mentioned earlier, there's pretty well nowhere you can go currently that you're not seeing now hiring jobs or are now hiring signs or talking to someone that's struggling to, to fill the gap with um, their production force. You know, there's a lot of factors to that. There's, besides everything pandemic related, um, there's a lot of companies that have been growing and expanding through this that have started up new facilities and, and are, are hiring new employees. As we look at that, you know, there's, that impacts us in repairing pallets. Um, it puts us looking where we can try to become more efficient with automation, but that all takes some time. Um, that's gonna impact the industry going into 2022 from multiple directions. My advice would be pay attention to those things that are somewhat anomalies still, that are not the norm, that are gonna affect everything in the supply chain. Uh, again, to me, the drought that we're experiencing in the West and how that's gonna impact agricultural type things over the next six to 12 months, um, that's gonna play into the supply chain. It's gonna affect how many pallets are used for ag, how much transportation is needed for ag. And, and there, it's an answer that we don't know yet. Forecasting and, and looking at the versatility of all the different pallets that might be available is probably the best thing that, that our customers can do and communicate that with us. Sit down with the local manager or the salesperson that represents 4840 for that customer. Have those discussions. Ask what options are available. Be familiar, be educated on what the options are, and then share as much insight as you can. We realize that not everybody can tell us what they're gonna be doing four months out, but there's some seasonality to a lot of our customers, and the most information that you can share with us gives us the best ammunition to be prepared and to help.